our seminar will be recorded and posted on the social media. So I want to really briefly introduce the seminar. So this is a seminar sponsored by the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and also Center for Urban Transition Research. It also co-sponsored by the several UTCs at USF, including NISA, National Institute for Congestion Reduction, and also CTAC, Center for Transition Environment and Community Health, and the TOMAT, which is uh, playing the new tricks on the older model. Um, and also, it's uh, facilitated by the ITE student chapter. And uh, by the way, my name is Yu Zhang, and I'm a professor in the C department and also director of the NASA. So today, we're very glad to have uh, Dr. Lin Bing Wang with us. And uh, Dr. Wang is a professor in the civil engineering, um, materials, and the transition infrastructure from University of Georgia. And um, he's also uh, he's a SCE fellow. So SCE is a uh, American Association, American Association of Civil Engineers, and he's also a founding a committee chair uh, for the uh, mechanics of pavement, and also the former chair of the nano mechanics and the micro mechanics of SCE. Dr. Wang has led more than seventy research projects sponsored by National Science Foundation. FHWA, Federal Highway Administration, Department of Defense, and other uh, federal agencies. And he has authored and co-authored more than 270 general and preceding publications, which is really amazing. And, you know, uh, with further ado, I'll give the floor to Dr. Wan, and uh, very glad to have you and look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Professor Zhang, for your kind introduction. Uh, and I also uh, want to uh, express my thanks to you and uh, Professor Lu's invitation uh, to give this seminar. Uh, and uh, this morning I chatted with uh, uh, your faculty. They are very, you know, eminent, right? Eminent faculty, well known uh, to the community. And uh, Professor Lu, you know, uh, very, you know, briefly described uh, to me, you know, the faculty, all the faculty in civil engineering, and uh, they are very eminent. You have a very uh, eminent group of faculty, you know, for research education, and especially they are very well recognized in our community in civil, geotechnical, transportation, and every area. So it's just a pleasure, you know, for me, and it's an honor to give this seminar. Uh, my talk today is digital twin method for material design and infrastructure re resilience. Looks like uh, there are quite a few of buzzwords, right? Digital twin, very hard. Material design very hard as well, and infrastructure resilience. Uh, by the way, you know, this is not just putting this, you know, words together, being doing the work in this area for more than 20 years. And uh, without, you know, consciously realize that we are doing this one, you know, falling into this, you know, category. Uh, and when, you know, this, you know, uh, area become very, you know, well established, uh, I just noticed that uh, what have we been doing is actually all are related with this area. So let's start with this uh, citation from Charles Dickens, and probably every one of you, most of you are very familiar with this uh, author. He wrote a lot of you know, very interesting novels, right? One of them is a tale of two cities that related with you know, Paris and uh, London, right? And uh, I'm not into, you can read over here, but this is a very, point trick you know, uh, writing, right? very beautiful writing in there, right? It was the winter of despair, it was spring of hope, right? I guess, you know, today, because that time is actually really with that two revolution. One is the industrial revolution, right? British, you know, in there. One is the French revolution that killed a lot of people as well, a social revolution, right? Uh, and today's situation is a little bit of similar, although it's a little bit of different, right? but it's similar, you see that one. Fast moving, uncertain world today, right? Matter by climate changes, you understand, and especially Florida, you just, uh, you know, experienced that uh, hurricane, right? Uh, maybe two weeks ago, roughly, right? Oh, yeah, one month ago, right? And the pandemics, you experienced, right? Wars, the Ukraine war is here. And digital technology is changing very quickly. You have to update your center for maybe every year or two years, right? The technology is changing very quickly. Conflicts of ideas with today about a different type of conflict, socialism against you know, capitalism and so on and so forth, and, and other disruptive forces. Because of this disruptive forces, we have to be more resilient. 
we have to learn how to be resilient. Uh, so that's uh, uh, the the uh, the the basically the topic of our center on. I think I very briefly. I mean, very briefly, you know, introduced this, you know, uh, the new university that I went to this uh, August. I've been working with, you know, Virginia Tech before that uh, for 17 years, and this uh, August I joined the uh, University of Georgia. Right, and that's a very good, you know, public school. Right, funded a uh, uh, very earlier, 1785. It's 100 years now. You know, the school that I graduated, Georgia Tech, is, you know, 1885. Right, this, you know, 1785. Land granted and seed granted, right? Located at Essence. I believe that's why they named that Essence. They wanted to, in a sense, uh, wanted to emphasize that is a uh, place of, you know, education, teaching, and uh, philosophical study, right? That's the Essence. Remember uh, the cradle of the Western, you know, culture, or Western culture, right? And uh, maybe also the, uh, the uh, technological area as well. No problem. Yeah, it's okay. Can huh? Oh, okay, okay. All right. See. So it's a uh, uh, it's there one, and then I'm now uh, directing, you know, sensing and perception of three, and we have faculty openings. You now, if you have graduate students and with you know professors, you know, recommendation, then you have a chance of being interviewed and uh, getting job over there on smart infrastructure, right? Recently, uh. And uh, graduate students, I'm right now trying to recruit, you know, uh, one PhD student. And uh, if you are master student and uh, with uh, good recommendations for from your professors, uh, you have a chance of uh, uh, studying together with us over there. So that's a uh, uh, very brief you know, introduction in this part. Here is the outline of my presentation. I'm going to talk about the fundamental concepts, especially the three, you know, right? digital training. Infrastructure and resilience is a fundamental concept. A lot of you know, kind of confusing. Today you heard about that, but specifically, what are those? I think a few of us can give a good answer. Of that, right? I'm trying to do that today. Material genome, right? Digital specimen, digital testing. How to use this kind of technology to design better material, uh, design the materials that uh, have the desired properties. Characterization and modeling for disruptive effects. That's the very important component for resilience, right? Resilience, you have to anticipate the disruptive forces and the disruptive effects. And a sense in monitoring inspection for disruption predictions, right? And resilience management. So this last two part, I will go very quickly, right? Just the exception of the major concepts and then go quickly of some examples because of the time limit. Okay. Concept of digital chain. Right. Okay, so I think most of you have heard or maybe read books and uh, read you know some of these articles about a digital chain. But uh, specifically, what are digital chains? Right, digital chain is a uh, digital chain is a digital representation and modeling and simulation of the structures and the interactions of components of a physical system. Right, that's the physical chain. Physical chain in there. Right, digital chain, physical system. Physical system, and uh, it's environmental. Right? That system, for example, like maybe this building today could be a system if you take it as a you know objective, and then the surrounding environmental, right? And the time changes. The realistic world is time changing, evolving, right? And it required detail or accuracy. So I put that one detail and required detail and accuracy. You don't need to model every detail, and it's impossible to do that, right? And you don't necessarily need to do that. Okay? So this is actually modified from my uh, definition from the digital specimen, digital testing, that uh, National Science Foundation project, uh, 2004, right? And uh, later on, I will reveal that definition. That definition, my understanding, is much better than, you know, this, you know, most of the definition for manufacturing you know, industry, right? The physical system quarter, right, include you know one or more objects, right? The digital you know representation may include the special relationships, right? Is this a kind of distorted? It's not. There are real-time you know or fundamental elements, right? That is no longer be 
look into, you know, you don't need to look into the detail of that inside, right? For example, you look at it as a beam, and you say take that beam as elastic, you know, material, right? You don't need to look into the beams, you know, uh, material inside that one. So fundamental element, uniform properties. And it's very similar to the idea that I will going to show you, right? And the interactions, the model should allow real-time acquired data from physical system to be imported to the model for verification, validation, and modification, and, right? And uh, uh, accurate, more accurate predictions. It may include the real-time communication with the physical chain, right? Like a physical system, typically when we talk about it, the digital chain could be also multi scale, right? Material scale, structure scale, and a system scale. Right? So this is the uh, very many, you know, kind of like uh, details, and they be treated uh, separately because at a different scale, the material properties or the system, you know, or kind of like a uh, properties that you are interested in may not be the same. And correspondingly, the modeling and simulation tools may not be the same. So you have to address them individually at a different scales. And this scale classification is very much related with our infrastructure, civil engineering, right? From materials to structural and to system, right? Material, structural, system, okay? So examples, you are very familiar with, right? As I Defined as the so called digital chain, you have to represent the, the configuration or the geometry or the space and the time, right? Space and the time and the interactions, right? That's essentially the major components for digital chain. Anything in the future you're going to talk is just the geometrical representation, configurations, structures, and interaction among the components. And look at these examples, right? Geometry, you know, the Earth, right? The Earth, right? The Sun, and uh, other uh, planets, right? And uh, they are interacting with each other following this, you know, uh, Newton's law, right? Three, that's the one. He's, that, that's a very good uh, digital chain, right? The digital chain, you know, the model, in, in a sense, our solo model, the solo, the model for the solo system, that's a very good, you know, uh, one, that's everyone from high school, middle school, you know that already, right? That's a digital chain, you agree? And the next one you see this, you know, atomic structure, right? So the, all the kind of elementary, you know, fundamental elementary particles, how they are arranged. Like you talk about electron clouds, right? And the interactions, following electromagnetic force, weak force, and a strong force, and a strong force, right? That's interactions in there. Crystal structures, right? It's various type of crystal structures. 14 types mm -hmm. and then different arrangement and the forces interacting with each other, right? So this is the fundamental understanding you need to establish. Geometry, configuration, interaction, right? This is the two major one. And the next one is the definition of infrastructure, right? So, you know, remember this is infrastructure. Today, if I ask you, what's your understanding about infrastructure? Can you give me a clear definition of that? Very challenging, even our professors, right? Because now today, you see that so many books, they talk about all sorts of infrastructure, right? And uh, I spent a tremendous amount of time to come up with, you know, that digital chain definition is for my own. I just, and also this infrastructure is my own, you know, definition here. I, I give this, you know, is human created of physical entities and a social economic systems that support the sustainable functionality of a human beings and a human society. So that's my definition of this infrastructure, right? This is very broad because it incorporates so many ideas and there are so many different definitions and then this one, I think it will be inclusive and simple, right? I don't want to, you know, can you know, write one page for that definition, <laughs> you cannot understand that, right? The same concept, digital chain, my definition is simple, right? But it capture the essential ideas. You don't need to capture all this kind of minor and not essential ideas, travel ones, you don't want to do that because that would not be inclusive enough, right? And you can see that one, right? You are, this would be very familiar with your transportation, communication, hydraulic and uh, uh, resources, right? Water resources and so on and so forth. So many types of infrastructures in there. And when we talk about infrastructure, we really wanted to emphasize interdependency. Right, the infrastructures are interdependent. You know, I taught a class about the uh, safety of interdependent uh, uh, infrastructure. Right, 
spend a tremendous amount of time, you know, concentrating on studying this by myself in there. So, you know, we have to emphasize this. Today, the communication, you know, system would determine whether the operation would be, uh, uh, would be, you know, performed or not performed, right? You send it in there and an electrical system to have to take, you know, the power, right? If without this, you know, anything, you know, you cannot do anything almost. Right? So they are independent in them. And when we talk about infrastructure, right? My major area is infrastructure, but many of you are also the system, you know, but uh, for the uh, expertise area. So I will mainly, you know, focus on inspection, inspect, uh, on the infrastructure side, right? And uh, inspections, monitoring, detections, right? These are the uh, actions you're going to take, uh, take, you know, on the infrastructure system. And uh, preventions, right? Warning, evacuation, you know, adaptation and so on. Resilience and uh, safety and uh, health of communities. These are your targets. Right, your objectives of doing this. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, the one, right? And also, uh, I really want to emph emphasize, you know, when we talk about resilience, it's mainly a system. You don't want to see that one element is talk about it, that uh, resilience it doesn't make any sense, right? You talk about it, the system, human beings, right? The human involved. If without a human involved, and then you say you have a, you know, a, a basically an infrastructure in the desert, you know, it's happening anything that nobody in there you don't care too much about it right that's the, the one and uh, today uh, also the concept of natural infrastructure like uh, the mountains by uh, rivers they consider that a uh, natural infrastructure right that you know is also in there and uh, that's a, a colleague of my uh, UGA Brian he formed this uh, institute of resilience right resilience of in institute that's uh, counting into this natural infrastructure as well. Concept of resilience. Now we already, you know, discussed the two major concepts. I hope these two concepts, you know, are clear to you, right? And uh, relatively simple and uh, easy to understand. Okay. The next one is a uh, resilience concept. And this is the kind of more broad. It's a very, very broad and it's a very challenging today, right? Everything now can be attributed to resilience concept in there. This is one, you know, definition. Right? It's from psychology. You know, it's, you know, from the very beginning, resilience come from human beings, right? Psychological. Resilience is a psychological quality that allows some people to be locked down by the adversities of life and come back at least as strong as before. It could be at least as strong, right? Sometimes it's something you 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 have a failure, you become stronger, but some people become weaker, right? Then the become weaker, then it's not resilient. Become stronger, resilient, right? And uh, uh, then, you know, letting difficulties, traumatic events or failure overcome them and drain the resolve. Highly resilient people find a way to change your course, emotionally heal and continue moving toward the goals, right? Why am I going to emphasize this? Because our support resilience, you know, today resilience infrastructure, resilient engineering come from this originally. And this is the very fundamental concept. I want you to make an analogy between these two whenever I come to the resilient infrastructure, resilient civil system. And if you are not sure, you can learn from yourself. Remember from here, you learn from yourself, right? So you, whatever you happen to you, you feel that. You feel that you ex, you know experience that, and that is something that can help you to understand the the so-called uh, resilient the infrastructure, resilient the system, right? engineering system. Right? There are quite a few of this, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, definitions. Okay, this is a Rockefeller you know, Foundation, the United Nations of you know, Disaster Risk Analysis Society, whatever. Various you know definitions. There's so many. If you type on you know Google, you will see you know the resilience in that. So billions, right? Billions of items are in there. Very similar to sustainability, right? And so on and so forth. I want to emphasize this one because this one is just infrastructure resilience is the ability to reduce the magnitude. Remember, reduce the magnitude proactively, right? And or duration of disruptive events. So we talk about the disruptions and this so-called disruptions, various kinds, many, many kinds of disruptions, right? In there. The effectiveness of a resilient infrastructure or 
enterprise depends upon its ability to anticipate. See that one, right? Anticipate. Oversaw that system, right? Not just the individual. A system can make a rearrangement, right? To make it itself stronger, right? Adapt and or repeatedly recover from a potentially disruptive event. That's the US, US Department of Homeland Security. Right? I think this definition is a, probably very helpful to civil engineering, to civil infrastructure systems. So you have to talk about this so-called uh, anticipate, absorb, adapt, and repeat the recovery. So it's judged by how much it can be recovered, how soon it can be recovered, how socioeconomically effective in terms of cost can be recovered. Okay, so that's the 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 so-called resilience in there. So connotations of resilience sitting here, right? Predicting disruptions could be a very important part, right? Understanding the nature and the consequence of disruptions, that's very important, right? You need to, if something is many is a very trial or consequence, you don't care too much about that. Right? Only since that it could cause a tremendous of disruptions. Preparing, right? Responding, managing, and you know, recovering all this uh, uh, kind of uh, disruption, you know, emergency and uh, adaptation, right? These are the words, or this is the actions that we're again doing for the so-called resilience, right? And a human, human and a community, you know, centered, right? Human needs. Health and safety, equality, gender, poverty. This is the related with uh, difference, right? Like maybe different gender and equal, uh, different, you know, races of people, and, you know, recovering or facing the challenges, responding would be different sometimes. We need to look into that one as well. Systematic view, right? Redundancy, replacement of design, synergy, wholeness, interdependency, complexity, right? So today we talk about complex systems, use AR, artificial intelligence to study them as well. Whole process, right? This is a remember that anticipating, adaptating, recovering. That's a whole process, right? So system, process. This is our two words: complexity, right? System, prox, you know, uh, system and a uh, uh, kind of process, entire process, and a complexity. That's the same thing we needed to consider, right? Mitigation. So the entire structure system interdependency. Don't say this is one individual building. Of course, you can talk about a resilient, a beam, an element that could be resilient. But the overall, we are more concerned with the entire system, right? The solution will come from entire system. You just don't want to just build a, your building. For example, the hurricane come, you build this building, like the, the wall, maybe 10 meters, right? <laughs> Cost a lot. Of course, it's a very kind of strong against the, the hurricane, but again, socioeconomically, it costs too much, right? Maybe not so necessary. Okay. How to measure resilience? How much? Right. So this is, this is also, right? How much can be recovered? How soon can be recovered? And how convenient can be recovered? And how socioeconomically, in in terms of like resources and resources, can be recovered? Right. Almost inclusive today, right? We talk about the sustainability. If I've seen you, you know, uh, graduate students, you're here, you might have heard about the sustainability in the last maybe 20 years or 10 years, right? So much a discussion about uh, sustainability, sustainable development, and so on and so forth. And today, resilient is almost everywhere as well because that's really uh, infused into all your life. It is, right? Safety. And the other side is resilience, right? So, Typically, you know, we also call that a resilient engineering as a safety engineering two, right? Safety engineering one, safety engineering, safety engineering, safety engineering two, right? So I, I, you know, I, I, I was joking. It's the limbing one's hypothesis, right? N small or equal to N three. So this is the way. Whatever meaningful research in civil and environmental engineering that uh, one is doing, you are doing, right? It will be linked to resilience in no more than three transformations: F1, F2, F3, right? And small than or small or equal than three, right? You can try. You can try, right? If I have time, you just give me an example. I will just link that one to resilience research. It is a broad philosophy for our design, construction, and uh, maintenance, right? 
very broad philosophy that we need to. And the reason is this, you know, the world actually, however, it's large, however complex it is, what happened? You have only four dimensions, right? X, Y, Z, and time. For that equation, you have only very limited derivations in there. Four forces, right? Four types of forces. 17 elementary particles and the three major principles, uniformity of all the science is built on this, you know, three major uh, principles in there. Uniformity, perpetuity, and of course energy. If you look into this, all these equations, why they come similar, look at, to you very similar, because they really be control this very fundamental elements in there, okay? So that's uh, one. And this one, because I'm in the materials area, many, right? Just the infrastructure area. I want to use this as an example, right? The example, I said, how many of you are just happened to taking like a deformation of material, defo deforming the body or strength of materials? Most of you maybe take uh, some kind of material classes in civil engineering, right? You can like, like uh, the testing of steel, right? Pour the steel and you have that curve. You are very familiar with, right? The elastic part, right? And the elastic plastic, right? And the damage involvement, right? This could be a plastic part rich, you know, the picker strains and whatever, right? It's a declining, right? The material become weak and finally it's a field. Finally, it's a field in here, right? In there, right? What ha happened? You wanted to have this, you know, elastic part be as much as possible. Elastic, right? Remove the load that can be recovered. You have that plastic deformation, but when you remove the load, it recovered, right? So part of them recovered. You want to have that plastic deformation as much as less as less as possible, right? So that's this one, right? So this is one. I say is room one elastic, right? That resilient room, room one plus room two, right? Room two, and this is a, can be you know elastic as well. Room three extended resilient, very little maybe you know uh, plastic deformation in there, right? And uh, zoom four, I think zoom three, room four extended resilience and zoom four and beyond become non-resilient, right? The material fail, brittle material maybe. And uh, I want you to think about supply, demand, capacity, loading, you know, curve, this type of relation, right? So you have this, you know, uh, they are resilience, you know, capacity, and then, you know, uh, this capacity is changing, like a material hardening, right? So that a system, you know, the material or the system, the resilience, you know, capacity is ex experiencing a change. It's not a constant, right? It's just in there. And uh, another one is a rate effect, right? So the overall system may be strong enough, but it, it immediately, if you apply the load very quickly and a very large loading, and uh, that instant uh, energy absorption may not be large enough, the material still failed, or the system still failed, right? So one is the overall, another is overall loading, another one is the loading rate. As this loading is, a, in a sense, is a general, is a generic kind of a term, right? Traffic or demand versus supply, right? So loading is a demand, okay? So it's some tremendous of uh, one, and the capacity, the system resistance, right? So this is the majority of this, you know, general uh, concepts. And one of them is the BAM wisdom, right? I'm not gonna talk about it so many details, but you see this is the bamboo, right? This main root in here, right? And then you grew a lot of you know, bamboos over here, right? What happened with this one? If you cut over here, cut over here, this bamboo is still surviving. It. What's the meaning of that? Pyronism, right? So you know, in a serious system, what happened? Cut one, then I just broke the entire system. And this pyronism system, very nice, right? So it's better than trees, you see, and it grew faster right, in there, right? So really, you know, we needed to learn from the natural world. You know, generally broad, you see that, you know, biomimic, mimicry, right? You see that one, right? Just a you know, lot, it's from a natural, you know, in billions of years and evolved into today's situation, there might be some kind of reasons why it take that type of shape, right? The morphology, shape, and the survival, survivability. Right, they are some reasons behind, right? So 
the most important part is done, right? Any questions? I said, right? Most important because of that, the one. Once you understand this, you know, concept, so it's easier for you to basically expand it, you know, your understanding to uh, basically to other research or studies, right, in there. So material genome, digital specimen and test. You know, remember my same topic today is the digital chain for material design and resilience, right? Uh, so this is actually 2011, right? The, the one by President Obama, right? So um, design the materials more quickly, right? And uh, it's just twice as, at least twice as faster than before. And uh, uh, training, uh, training the workforces as well. Uh, that's the one, the Genoma Initiative. And compared to the traditional one, right? Traditional one, we have this experimental tools. And today here, we have computational tools and uh, digital data, right? Historically, we don't use this. It's just uh, you know, come up with you know, a formula, a blender formula, and then develop the mixes and then test whether it's good or not, right? And today we can use a lot of this computational tools and uh, digital data, right? And this is a very, you know, uh, basically, uh, widely uh, accepted uh, philosophy or followed by many other countries like uh, uh, China, like uh, maybe uh, Europe as well. They have many, many in initiatives like abolition or semination of materials, right? And uh, this is a center, NIST, like uh, the uh, chemical, you know, of kind of material, you know, uh, structure as well. The, uh, NIST West, you know, Los, Los, the Western, Los Western University, right? China also like uh, has some of these initiatives uh, as well, right? So multi-scale model, remember representation, right? Number one, you have to characterize, represent the structure, right? Different uh, geometrical configurations, the properties would be different, the responses would be different, right? You know, you'll feel that, and this is straightforward to you. That's human you know, structure, right? Our structure, hands, foot, and so on, so on. The different structures would be different, right? This is important. We needed to do the characterization of different structures. And in the last um, 20 years or some, you know, I established a laboratory like, you know, atomic force X-ray, you know, uh, tomography imaging, you know, a lot of X-ray and tomography imaging systems that are quite, uh, you know, it's a PR or co -PR. Uh, with you know multi scale from nano scale, this is uh, this one is nano scale, and uh, to the uh, micro scale and uh, to millimeter scale, right? It's a different scale, and this is even you know to uh, one nanometer and a uh, sub nanometer as well uh, to represent uh, the structure, material structure, and the X ray system can acquire the three dimensional representation, not two dimensional. Like this is two dimensional, and uh, this is also two dimensional surface on it. And this is, you know, X-ray system will be three-dimensional, right? And this is a, a basically exploratory advanced research program is just uh, uh, using the developing a methodology to characterize and model the hydration, cement hydration process, forming the microstructure, right? Forming the structure. And uh, uh, this is a collaboration with Caltech, you know, Bill Goddard, Professor Bill Goddard, California Institute of Technology, and he's doing this quantum mechanics modeling and to the mod, uh, molecular dynamics in our modeling. We were taking a Rex uh, force uh, potential from them. They do this quantum calculation, get the potentials for us, and we do this in a molecular dynamics and microstructure modeling and simulation. And the main purpose is for design materials, right? Different components, different combinations, and the uh, properties are different. So we can use this in a computational platform to design, to come up with a design, a formula first, and then use you know, the testing to validate or verify them, right? So this is the much scale, right? Just from this atom scale, right? Atom to atom interaction, atom to particle interaction, the particle to atom, right? Particle to particle interaction. In a sense, we generalize this kind of particle mechanics, right? The particle interactions, into this multi-scale crossing scale you know, modeling using you know, the hand shaking approach to come up with you know, multi-scale modeling from MD, FEM, you know, right? FEM, the nodes and the atoms, they overlapping each other at the uh, uh, hand shaking you know, room, right? Interface room in there. So this is a multi-scale modeling and the bridge scale. And then, you know, come to this, you know, uh, remember that's uh, from the quantum, the chemistry, right? 
chemical reactions and uh, to form in this, you know, particles, grains, and then you know, come to this, you know, blend, you know, mixture. And this is, uh, you are very familiar with this, right? Some of you, you have seen this, you are right on the roads, you see this, you know, and Professor uh, Lu is also an expert, you know, in pavement materials as well, right? So, um, so this one is actually uh, the one that uh, 2004. So that's why I say it's not just buzzwords, put them together, right? That's the definition that I had, that I was writing that proposal. This is exactly the definition I put in there. Digital representation of the 3D mark structure of a physical specimen is a digital specimen. It's a digital counterpart, right? So the digital thing, the definition is called a digital counterpart. Exactly they use that word, right? Of the physical specimen in every required detail. Required, don't need it to be all the detail. Right? Computational assimilation of a mechanical system, a mechanical physical test, which is based on digital specimen. I consider every required detail. Evolution as a digital test, right? Compare this one versus the one that uh, uh, the digital twin, you know, concept that come up with 2010 to 2011 by NASA, right? That's a very, you know, similar, very similar one. Okay. We, we did it earlier, right? So engineers, you know, you, you, you agree, right? We're civil engineers so well, good as well, strong, right? We did this as well. And uh, the, the digital twin, of course, it is a very good, so it's a digital representation. So it's a 3D image, three dimensional image, and you can just send this, you know, to everyone, right? You know, let's email to you or put it in the, on, on Google Drive, you can download the right? Okay. And perform a different type of testing. Got the boundary like this, this one, right? Compression testing, indirect tensor testing, and uh, study the void structure, permeability, right? You know, porous media and so on and so forth. Various type of digital testing, right? Modeling, simple ones like it's elastic, but it may, the real world it may not be elastic, right? But it, you can approximate at the required detail. Remember, I didn't say at exactly detail, at required detail and accuracy, right? Sometimes you have uh, pursuing or uh, better uh, accuracy, but it costs you much more, right? And uh, more detail, right? This is a uh, with market structure, right? This is testing, right? We digital asphalt pavement analyzer testing, right? So we have this, you know, image, X-ray and image in there, come up with, you know, plastic, elastoplastic modeling, and they even model the particle movements, right? During the testing, and uh, we reconstruct that one. And after this testing, before the testing, we reconstructed the structure, digital representation, or digital specimen, or digital thing, right? And after the testing, you know, we perform the simulation that's a digital testing or digital twin test. And then, you know, we do the testing and the experimental measurement as well and compare the model simulation results versus the experimental measurements in there. Right? And uh, using another one is a discrete particle, right? Remember, we have one is a continuous, typically it's the finite element approach, right? Although you can remove the voids, right? Remove, you know, part of the structure. Take care of this, you know, uh, non-continuous, you know, part. But uh, another uh, natural approach is uh, a discrete element uh, approach, right? And a discrete element, you can reconstruct the representation of the actual world, right? Actual particles using small bars to represent them. Use this, you know, ellipsoids, right? It quite, uh, Accuracy. For example, if you use this, you know, ellipsoids to represent, you know, each particle, like this type of particle, the accuracy may be, you know, smaller, right? So we we find that a deviation could be 15 percent, you know, difference, right? But you know, it's easy. It's only just one particle each time, right? And this time you can, this one you can have a lot of particles to represent. Computation efficiency would be better. Accuracy would be lower, right? So this is a a kind of, uh, this is the testing, right? We did, right? Director, you know, tension test, and this is a digital representation, right? Digital specimen and the digital testing, you know, you mod this one. This is the experimental measurement. This is a clustering DEM, right? Small particles, put them together, and conventional DEM. And you see that one. This is not comparable to this one, right? The trend is not accurate. This is the one. And uh, taking, you know, more accurate uh, representation of the real world of the real pa particle, the accuracy would increase, right? And uh, genome, right? uh, genome, you know, using this digital chain to address the 
the genome approach. And this is the one that uh, when I was happening a sabbatical in China, 2013, I got this. It's interesting in one, it's just the mineral composition, right? Crystal structural inherited defects. Looking into how the material crystal structural and uh, the atomic forces uh, would uh, determine the material properties, right? During the crushing, during uh, crushing process, right? And uh, during the service, how this would uh, interact with the interfaces between aspect binder and aggregates. Yeah. And uh, this National Science Foundation project for the mixed design. So the original one mm -hmm. we using that X-ray scanning to come up with the real risk representation of real structure, right? And this one is using computer to generate the structure and uh, do the modeling and simulation, right? This is a mixed design. And then uh, come up with this, you know, uh, compression curve, right? Different uh, aspect binding content and they uh, determine the compression stresses and they uh, determine the optimal aspect binding content it's both, uh, all this is just operated in the computer. And then, then use this uh, testing to verify uh, different type of particle shifts and uh, plus that one into the extreme tomography imaging system and do the testing and do the scanning and uh, watch the particle movements and using the discrete element model to simulate the results, to validate our modeling, right? To verify, validate our models in there. And uh, later on, remember, you know, the computational modeling, right? That's the computational DEM, this type of modeling. Three, you know, columns in there, right? One is experimental. The other one is the modeling simulation. The other one is data, right? So then this is one is the enhancement using the data approach. Uh, most of us and I'll be familiar with, you know, design of as for the binding content, right? Is, uh, as for the mixture and is one of the critical steps is uh, determine the as for the binding content. And then, Traditional approach is experimental approach, right? And this one, we use this LTPV data and a different type of mixture to come up with, you know, the prediction, right? Different gradation, loading history, right? The loading history, you know, how, how much loading you're gonna take, environmental conditions, I put this all together to come up with, you know, a prediction using the convolutional neural network and a various type of like so-called AR today, very popular data, you know, processing approach, right? And to come up with a prediction of aspect binding content. And we actually find out that if we use effective aspect binding content, that prediction will give us you know, much better accuracy. But essentially, effective aspect binding content is what we really care, right? Because the absorbed aspect binder is absorbed into the aggregates, no longer be participating into the reactions with you know, each other, or like interfacing with each other. And uh, predicting the performance, right? Using the data to predict uh, the international roughness index, how is it going to change with time? How the rotting will be changed with time? And we come up with, with good results, you know, very, very good results. And uh, uh, my former uh, PhD student, Jian Lu, and he's going to mm -hmm. join me, you know, in January uh, at the UGA. He just got, you know, the uh, second, uh, second, uh, Please a word from the LTPP data competition, right? Just uh, recently, very interesting results. So the next uh, applications, right, is just uh, how use this kind of digital twin method to design multifunctional materials, right? And uh, I'm not sure you are familiar with the so-called acoustic emission, right? Acoustic emission, but you have that experience in there. You know, you watch it, you see you hear some kind of noise in there, right? You break, you know, uh, uh, a, a branch of wood, you hear the voice, right? Do, in a sense, during this fracture process, it will generate a acoustic emission, electromagnetic waves, right? And we make use of this one. You see this kind of relationship, right? So this, you know, the number of counts, so that's a acoustic emission, right? The acoustic wave generated, uh, and this is a threshold value. Threshold is the background, uh, Emission, background emission is very small and uh, it's not, you know, related with any kind of events, all right? Events, you know, maybe fracturing event, right? You know, deforming events and so on and so forth. And uh, this count, how many, you know, per time is related with, you know, the intensity, you know, the uh, stress intensity factor, delta K, right? And uh, this is a uh, Paris law, right? So in a sense, this is kind of count Acoustic emission count is related with you know the fracture process, right? So that's this property we can use. In a sense, we can make use of that. 
how you can make use of that? You make the count and you relate that one with the material damage. And uh, the acoustic count using the sensors, right? Vibration sensors can easily get that signal. And from that signal, you can trace back to the uh, to the material status. And now, if you know some materials, they are fractioning, and then you know that you know uh, the future characteristics of this acoustic emission. What happened? You can info back to say, you know, yeah, there might be some fracturing, and this must be this material is fracturing because the fracture pattern, the acoustic emission pattern, may not be the same, right? So we can make use of this to design the so-called uh, self-sensing material, right? So-called self-sensing, there is no self-sensing, but it, some features can be used for you to observe there is something wrong in there, right? So that is the one that will enable the self-sensing. It's not just the truly self-sensing. You agree? And that's the one. So we design this, you know, self, you know, sense healing, self healing, self healing material, right? So one is the self healing material, and uh, the self healing, you know, or uh, or uh, uh, micro, micro capsules, you know, we design, uh, synthesize, and we can characterize the acoustic emission properties. So you place that one into the material, but you know the acoustic emission property of that capsules, and when you hear, of course, using a machine to hear, right? Hear that acoustic emission, you see it in this material field, right? That's the self-sensing concept in here. So that's what we did, okay? This is that, you know, Michael, uh, this, uh, uh, this is the E51, right? E51 is a uh, micro capsule that we, we synthesized, designed, synthesized. And uh, this is the acoustic emission of property, right? And it really watch it. We, we use this one for the material and we watch this kind of like a process. And it would, I think we can truly uh, interpret that one. There is a self healing process because the material, uh, or there are 10 minutes, I need to be a, a little bit quicker, right? So we can just truly find this material self healed and uh, there is acoustic emission in there. So right? that's, we make use of this one for self healing and self sensing, right? And uh, the same, you know, concept that we use this is so called EPS concrete, right? And it's used it's EPS concrete for uh, improving the material properties, right? Light weighted, uh, and uh, uh, more green right, uh, material properties. And uh, we also did uh, we also did uh, this, you know, uh, acoustic emission uh, characterization of this, you know, material and make use of this material for the self healing, self uh, sensing properties. Right? So that's uh, uh, this, oh, what's this is, an, uh, I think it may not be so good, right? This is a generalization, right? digital world, real world interaction, right? It's just uh, simple, right? representing the real world geometric or configuration and quantify or characterize the interaction. And uh, whenever you are confused, look into your solar model, right? Solar model, you are very familiar, geometry, interaction, but our interaction might be more complicated, all right? The geometry, you know, configuration might be much more complicated than in your solar system, but the essential concept uh, is the same, are the same essential concepts, right? Okay. Characterization and modeling for disruptive effects, right? All the resilience, the first step of predicting disruptive effects. Okay. And this is a gas gun system. Uh, it's an impact and it's high speed imaging you know, system that we acquired from uh, a grant from uh, a grant by the Department of Defense. And this gas gun system can shoot a projectile into one kilometer per second. Now, under this type of you know loading, you know the concrete is so strong, it's smashed as powered. You see that I, I, I'm going to show you right. And the computational simulation, high performance computation, and this is you know parted element of simulation and discrete element of simulation. Right. This is uh, the study over here. And uh, I guess I'm not sure whether I have to probably have to do this. So this acquired, this high speed camera, that high speed camera can acquire one million frames per second. One second can one million frames. And I used the 
about one, right? Before it's uh, too many frames per second. Right? One camera is cost uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Very expensive camera, right? An impact system is also. So we perform this one, and this is the uh, ground I got from Department of Defense. That you know after nine one one, right? That nine one one that period, and uh, the Department of Defense they support a lot of this kind of damage protection you know, study. So we got that system and do this one. So you need to predict, yes, the material, how resistant they are. And under this type of penetration, how much depth you can penetrate into, right? So that's the one. We, we, de we develop a simulation you know, using this, you know, DEM simulation, right? This is the model of simulation. And the different velocity, different projectile size, how much, you know, depth you can penetrate, right? That's a, this study. And the experimental results versus uh, uh, simulation results, they are very, the trend are very consistent. And another type of explosion, right? Firing, remember. This is also a disruptive event, right? The disruption in tunnel. You see this in many, many cases, right? Various type of tunnel firing and explosion, right? You know, in Europe, China, and different places. You see that one. Cause tremendous amount of damage and uh, loss of life as well, right? It's a very, you know, uh, kind of disruptive, you know, event in there. And uh, we, Using this, you know, uh, high temperature, you know, uh, laboratory to do the testing, right? It's uh, you know, heated the material to several hundred degree, you know, right? See, and then you know, burn that, and then testing the material, how they degrade it, and using the modeling simulation to model why this uh, uh, material become weak, right? That's uh, another study, and uh, this is uh, uh, using the uh, OS Dyno, right? Uh, this is a uh, explicit, explicit you know, uh, dynamic finite element to, to model that explosion process, right? How much you know uh, forces or the pressure wave, the pressure generated onto the uh, tunnel walls, right? The tunnel lining system, and it started using the gel polymer, right, to protect you know the firing, right? The gel polymer has a very good you know, future of uh, installation right, in there, and uh, study. Other modeling, like modeling simulation for the hydronic, you know, uh, uh, kind of damaging, right? The uh, erosion process, you know, the particles due to this, you know, uh, excess, you know, poor water pressure is going to take away uh, many of these particles and uh, weaken the material. Right? Also, prediction of, you know, re-evaluating the uh, transmission, you know, tower using fallet element analysis to see, you know, if we're under some kind of extreme events, right? High, lower temperature, wind, earthquake, and a combination, different combination, whether our system is resilient enough or it's resistant, has enough, you know, resistance, resistance or not. But um, this type of evaluation would uh, allow you where is the waking point, right? And different combination of loading, the waking point is there, we're going to do reinforcement, right? Study, you know, natural. Right, uh, natural disasters like uh, flood, you know, uh, mud flow, mud flow, right? So you see that uh, mud flow is very dangerous. It's just uh, uh, demolishing, you know, yes, in many cases, damaging houses and uh, killing people, right? And using this uh, uh, mixture theory, right? Mixture theory is considered, you know, voids, water, and uh, solid particles, right? And uh, using this material point to, to do the simulation. Larger deformation, right? The very, you know, you cannot use it as a traditional approach. You fix the space, and this uses this, you know, material point approach to do the simulation. Testing wise, right? Do the testing. How it is, you know, different type of combinations, you know, saturation, right? Slope, you know, angle, and uh, to say, you know, what is the initial conditions for initiation conditions for the mother flow, mother flow, right? Sensing monitoring. And the inspection, right? This uh, another one. Now it's quick, and we have five minutes. I can finish that, right? Definitely. Uh, IoT, the IoT sensor network uh, from a, a project with energy harvesting, Python electric energy harvesting, harvesting from harvesting the uh, vibration energy, deformation energy, and we turn that one into a self-powered system and uh, into this, you know, uh, basic IoT system, right? Sensors. Uh, IoT, you know, get that uh, a getaway and then to the uh, cloud and uh, transmitting, you know, to the central office or central control system for bridge monitoring. And this is actually sonar energy, you know, powering as well, right? And this is a 
IoT, you know, uh, kind of signal it will determine how much signal could be lost, right? Just signal loss or transmission effect uh, effectiveness. And this is the bridge, you know, monitoring the some Dr. Tong that time is a student. You know, he did that, you know, for kind of monitoring, you know, the bridge, you know, uh, vibration. So that's one, you know, one. And uh, the, the next one is the resilient measurement and the data driven, you know, risk analysis. Right? So this is uh, after so many years of study, you know, it come up finally is a management system, right? It's, uh, collecting the data, right? Various type of infrastructure, pipelines, tunnel, bridge, and so on and so forth. And we also did that. You know? We also did the pavement as well, collected the data, and then visualized, right? And using the beam, GIS, and the material studio, right? From material scale to structural, right? Material studios, material scale, and a beam, structure scale, right? And a GIS system scale. So these are together. And then a modular data analysis, various type of AR approach, right? Machine learning, deep learning, file element, and DM element, you know, various type of modeling. And they come to this, you know, interaction, right? The, you know, modeling simulation results be visualized and then using the virtual, you know, reality, mixed reality and sciences to study, you know, the responses of the system, right? And uh, guiding the emergency measurement. In there. And uh, this is an example for the pavement. Right? It's relatively simple. For pavement one, it's simple because the structure is relatively simple. But the material, materials are very complicated. Right? And uh, using this, you know, uh, AR approach for evaluating right, the risks, right? And compare that one with, you know, a uh, classical, you know, condition, you know, traditional, you know, uh, structural evaluation and so. And this is a, a mixed reality. You know, say, you know, you, in a sense, you know, this is the evaluation and the mixed reality put in there. You can, in the laboratory, say, you know, yeah, that's the real pipeline. And you have some kind of defects in there. People can do the inspection in there and you can interact with the people on site, right? You know, and this is a good video, you know, in there. I don't want to, time wise, I don't have much time to do that. Uh, yeah, it is here, right? It's kind of in there. Two more minutes, right? I think you are hungry as well, right? Not hungry, just not only just for knowledge, but also for the real world food. Uh, uh, this is <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. yeah. So where are you basically what projects are are your, your skills being used? So this is multi scale, right? Remember material scale, structure scale. And a system scale, right? So, uh, material scale, you see that in you know, a material design, right? The digital training is used for material design, material property characterization, right? And uh, material performance prediction, right? This is uh, very widely. You know, there are many, many projects behind. I, due to time wise, you know, usually I have 150 slides, right? So it's 150, and then now I turn that one into 58 slides. And uh, there are many examples. I just uh, need. I just give one or two examples in there. So that's uh, uh, the one. So three scales, uh, different scales. Structure scale, you can use this kind of structure measurement, and the system scale for like a resilience optimization, right? So different scale, the problems are not the same, and correspondingly, the modeling approaches are not the same, right? For example, system scale, you may, you know, use, you know, aging based modeling, model the interactions, right? Or use smarter aging to incorporate, you know, uh, uh, artificial intelligence in there. Uh, did I, you know, answer your question? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. So uh, thank you so much, Doctor, for this amazing presentation. Uh, so uh, I am a PhD student under the uh, guidance of Dr. Chinglu. So mainly I work in uh, waste materials, uh, trying to, uh, you know, for the sake of the sustainable pavement. To what, to what extent you think or you believe that we can achieve the resilience pavement when we uh, design like waste materials and in, in the in the asphalt mixtures, or is there any um, like uh, real projects that we achieve the resilient from the using of the uh, waste materials in pavement design? That's a a very good question, and it's a, a challenging question for me, right? Remember last time I said you know three steps, three you know mapping functions, right? F1, F2, F3, it will be good at resilience. I strongly believe, you know, uh, recycling is very much related with resilience as well. You agree with that, right? Because that recycling is looking into the system, it's not just only, just economically, right? Economically it is, but it uh, wrote a whole thing, right? You see that recycling, otherwise, you know, you see the entire environmental would be kind of damaged. If the materials are not recycled and it's lay there everywhere, and that entire environmental would be damaged, right? So re recycling from a system, from system point of view, address that very well. Right? And uh, from the material wise, if you can achieve this, you know, high performance, the material properties are good or equally good or even better, right? You know, then you know the uh, using this original like aggregates, right? And then this is more resilient in a sense, right? To a certain degree with that, right? And it is possible to do that. I strongly believe it is possible to do that. Uh, for some of the materials, like uh, the uh, cement, you know, treated concrete, right? And when you re recycle them, and you will find the material properties are even better than using you know, the original aggregates, right? It is, I don't know the reason, I did a lot of testing, and that was at the Louisiana State University, and then just to find out using recycled materials, the properties are better, right? And for cement treated, but for asphalt concrete, it may not be. I'm not sure. I just, I didn't do work in this area. Dr. Lu is uh, an expert in this area, and strongly believe it's uh, possible to do that, especially with some kind of uh, new atmospheres, right? Potentially to bond uh, the surface, right? The surface, you know, of the uh, recycled, you know, aggregates versus uh, recycled uh, asphalt versus, you know, the uh, original new uh, materials, right? I think it can be done. And uh, one of the potential is looking into this, you know, civilic modeling to come up with a good candidate, right? And uh, testing them. But it takes time. All these discoveries takes time to do that, right? It's not easier, especially, you know, we, we will talk about this kind of material design can be faster, but it's not easy to achieve that twice as fast. It is not, right? This is something I needed to bring to your attention. But um, this is the one that I did. This is uh, more than 20 years right? since my, you know, uh, PhD study, you know, in 1994. So many years accumulatively, I, uh, I just find that, you know, progress is very little, 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 little. But it, after maybe, 20 years or 30 years, you accumulatively you see some kind of changes. Yeah. Technological, there is no revolution. Although we talk about the industrial revolution, that industrial revolution happened, you know, it's across maybe several decades, right? And it's not accomplished. You agree? So be patient, you know, take when you choose this uh, technological area, truly, truly, it's not easier to do, right? Yeah. My question is, is um, I think of the, 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 the material and digital testing. Uh, my question is, do you have an example that's uh, a major decision made by agencies or authorities were based on these kind of uh, material, digital materials or digital testing models? 
many, right? That's truly many, you know, even like a, a remember, it's not a completely digital model. Right? Digital model is a part of that. I must emphasize purely relying on this, you know, modern simulation and directly use that. This example is almost a no to my understanding. No example, you just purely come up with a modern simulation and then you directly use this modern simulation results for the real application. And typically you say the modeling and the simulation and a plus a limited validation and a verification process, right? And this is often, you know, it's adopted by many agencies, federal high administration, Department of Defense, they all use this as well. Department of Defense, you know, uh, 2000, um, remember it's 2014, 2014, 13, they come up with this again design for materials, right? And that's $89 million. Uh, we, we, at the very beginning, you try to propose that one. And this uh, uh, assistant, the pop, assistant dean, he wanted to take the leader, a junior take that time I was. But the last minute he dropped, he said, I'm not able to afford it. And the people were very you know, pissed off by his you know, decision. He wanted to take the leader and then you know, didn't. And that one go to John Hopkins University, $89 million. $89 million. And then they come up with the various you know, approach of you know, designing the metal materials, right? Metal materials and then you know, this materials uh, uh, should be happening the superior performance. And this one is pretty successful at some of this metal. Why right now the metal materials were the designed uh, following the you know, approach. But you need a validation and a verification. Federal Higher Administration is also doing some of the work but, you know, evaluating the materials with some kind of predictions, modeling, simulation, so right? and then later on they verify, you know, validate you know the mix design that you come up with, and uh, go into the field application directly. So cannot just rely on fully. Remember that triangle is still there, right? Data and uh, uh, data and uh, uh, experimentation, modeling and simulation. Okay, so cannot separate. Uh, them, right. Have a question? Oh, okay. Yeah. The last. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Our online audience. Any questions from online audience? All right, um, it's not given that we already passed the one, so I will um, say that uh, this presentation, uh, we are ending this um, presentation now. And please join me again to thank uh, Professor Wang for this wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Asma. Okay, so I look forward to see you next week, and we will have another speaker actually uh professor laurie garrow from georgia tech mm -hmm. we have so laurie many, Gare, yeah. Yeah, so many yeah. professors from from georgia State yeah. recently uh yeah so she's an expert in aviation demand modeling yeah. and analysis so yeah. that'll be interesting too all right thank you again yeah. and yeah. look forward to seeing you next week thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Asad. Um, Asad, I uh, didn't see that you raised your hand. Uh, Do you want to ask the uh, questions now? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much, Doctor Zhang, for uh, giving me the opportunity to ask the question. Um, it's, I'm not sure if he's still uh, able to uh, time to answer. Um, Yes, ask the yes, question. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Um, Wang, for the uh, informative uh, presentation. Uh, I have um, um, a quick question uh, regarding of the um, uh, quantify and characterization of uh, the uh, volumetric properties of the asphalt mixtures. Um, um, as we know, the traditional way to uh, to find out the the air voids uh, which uh, are required to uh, 
to find the, the bulk specific gravity and theoretical specific, specific gra theoretical uh, uh, loose mixtures, which is uh, sometimes um, uh, causes uh, some of the difficulties to find out the um, the air voids. So I'm just wondering, uh, is this now the time that uh, the 3D uh, imaging tools uh, able to um, uh, to replace the, um, the traditional way to find out the air voids of asphalt mixtures? Oh, I think that's a good question. Uh, it cannot be replacing. Uh, that's the uh, the reason is that, you know, all this kind of digital pretty, you have a resolution issue, right? So you have yes. a, some have a resolution in there and then some of this, you know, or wider structure, very, you know, small wider structure will not be able to capture it. So that's, uh, 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 cannot replace them. But if for some of the purpose, like uh, for example, permeability, right? Sometimes yes. the water flow and the water size must be larger enough because if uh, the water size is very small, then that capital, capital reinforce would uh, uh, prevent you know, water from flowing, right? So in that case, sometimes we will be able to capture the connected voice and use that connected voice to uh, model and simulate you know, the, part, the uh, water flow in the uh, porous media, like a concrete, aspect concrete. Uh, that's feasible, and we did uh, some work a uh, uh, long time ago, and uh, one of the uh, students uh, and I come up with a uh, connected void prediction and a connected void uh, best, you know, uh, permeability prediction, and uh, they get, uh, you know, very uh, good results in there. Yes. Thank you. That's a very good question, really. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, great. Okay. okay, that's the true end of this presentation. Thank everybody.